Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explain. Today I would like to create a code pen with Flutter. I decided for code pen from Florin Pop, which is created with HTML, CSS and JavaScript and I would like to show you how we can create the same effect with Flutter. I will put the link to Florin Pop's code pen and also to the Flutter code pen which I'm going to create it in the video description that if you are interested you can find the link below and now Pen which we want to rebuild it. If I refresh the pen, we can see that the white line will be drawn. So to start with our project, I open the Android Studio and create a new Flutter project. I give a name to our project and after that go to the next step and finish the creation. To start with coding, I'm going to delete everything that we don't need it in the project. And now I create a stateless widget and call it my home page. As our widget doesn't have an input parameter, I should delete the title as an input parameter. I tidy up a little bit more our project. That means every comment will be deleted and I save it. Instead of a container widget, I will use here a scaffold widget. And as input parameter for body I will use here a stack because I think with stack we can overlap several children which is gonna be our text our white line and so go on so the fact the first child is our text widget in the text widget I will write the text that we saw in the pen from Florin Pop so I will create here a variable and call it my text this is a string, my text in a stateless widget, it should be a final variable and the text is, if you have a look, we love to play, so I write it and when I save it, we can see the text in top left of our screen. The next step is to give a background color to our scaffold. The color is the blue, let's find the color, here we go. I will use the value and write it here in the brackets with 0xff and the color number. After that, I want to fix the font size. In text style, I will use the font size, probably 42. And after that, I want to bring the text in the middle of our screen. So let's wrap our text widget in a center widget. And here we can see the text in the middle of our screen. The next widget which I want to add to our widget tree is the custom paint widget. It has a size, maybe size 300, 300, and it has also the painter. The painter will draw the white line for us. So I will call it the line painter. The line painter is a simple class which extends the custom painter for us and it implements two methods. The first method is the paint method, which has two input parameters, the canvas and the size. And the second method is the shoot repaint method, and it's called when the custom painter is rebuilt. So I will set it to true, that means every time the paint method should be rebuilt. Now let's complete our paint method. For painting our line, we need the start point and the end point of the line. The start point is an offset with the horizontal component or dx0 and the vertical component gonna be the screen height divided by two. And the end point gonna be similar to that, which is also an offset. But this time the horizontal component is the width of our screen and the height is the same as the start point which is the middle of our screen. Now I define the variables which I already used. So the screen height is a double and the screen width is also a double and after that I will initialize them in the constructor of the line painter. So I define the screen width and the screen height. We are accessing the height and width of the screen with media query of context. And our last variable is a paint, which contains an instance of the object paint. Here I would like to define the color and the width 
of our line and I will do that with the cascade notation of dart. I will set the color to white and the width gonna be 20 pixels. And last but not least, in the paint method, we can get our canvas and draw on it. We can draw a line, draw an arc, a circle. Here we are going to draw a line with the start point, the end point, and the paint which we define. And when I save it, we can see the line. Amazing guys, we made it. I think the line is a little bit too thick, so I will set it to 10 and it looks much better now. The next step is to give our line some animation so that it looks like to be drawn from left side, for example, to right side. For this purpose, I wrap our custom paint widget in a twin animation builder. Now we should define some parameters. The first one is twin. The twin defines the target value for the animation. That means where our animation will start and where is the end point of the animation. The twin type is a double in our case and the end point is the end of the screen width, which I access again via media query. The next parameter is the duration. That means how long our animation will take. And I will define it with millisecond for 4000. And the last one is the builder, which is a callback and it has an, a context an I as double and a child which is a widget. I replace the child with return, add a semicolon at the end of our bracket and replace the screen width with I which we get from our builder. And when I save it, we should see the animation. Perfect, it works. Now if we have a look again in the original example that we tried to rebuild and I refresh the page, we can see that the white line look like that it's going through the different letters. That means some of the letters are in front of the line and some of them are in the behind. To get the same result that our text is also in front of the line, I used at the beginning again a text widget. But if we are looking at the result what we got, all the text, all the letters are in front of the line, but it's not what we wanted. What we need is a row with a list of letters that we can show them randomly in front of the line. To achieve that, I will create here a method in our My Home Page class. I will call it a list of letters. In this method, we want to return a list of letters. So at first, I'm going to split our text, my text.split, with single code, and I put the result of this in a variable which I call it letters. After that, I map the letters and go through each letter, get a text widget out of the letter. So it's gonna be the letter and the style of our text should be defined here. So the font size is gonna be 42. And now I should define the color of each letter. For that, I will create later a random number method and depends on the number of this method, which is going to be between zero and one, I will decide which color it's going to be have our letter. If it's bigger than 0 0.5, I will give the letter a black color. And if not, the color is going to be transparent. So we are finished here. And as next, I'm going to create the next method. The random number. The random number, the return parameter of this method is going to be a double. And what I'm doing here is call the random method and execute the next double. And after that, what we want from list of letter is a list. So, and return the text, return the letters, and the return parameter of the list of letter method is going to be a list of widgets. So I will use the list of letter as a children of a row and just the main axis alignment. If I save, we can see that our letters in front of the line doesn't overlay our text in the background properly. So for that, I should change the text widget also to the row with all letters. But this time, all our letters will have 
the black color. So I split my text with the single code and after that map it and go through each letter and out of each letter I will create a text widget with letter and the style of that gonna be the same as previous widget and the font size is 42 and last but not least we will create a list out of that and at the end adjust the main axis alignment amazing guys we made it if I refresh the app, we can see that the line is go smoothly between the letters. And we did it. Perfect. At the end, I want to go to the code pen Flutter, create a pen, open Flutter editor and paste the code what we wrote in our editor. I copy the code and I will paste it here and save and see what's the result going to be. As expected, we see the same result as we saw in our iOS simulator. So guys, thank you very much for watching me. That was with this video. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And above me, you can see two videos that you are probably interested in it. Stay tuned until next video. See you.